this session, which will be a brief one, uh, probably about uh, one hour, uh, this is on ingredients of Islamic financial innovation. And it's a kind of, I call it Sharia teaser. We give uh, just a flavor how we can use some very simple contracts, very simple concepts to innovate uh, for the benefit of uh, product development in Islamic banking and finance. Um, and I, the list for required for innovating in Islamic uh, financial services industry is long, but we can summarize that list into three areas. For effective innovation in Islamic banking and finance, we require knowledge of what is happening in the, Islam, uh, in the conventional banking and finance. Without good knowledge of uh, conventional financial technology, it is almost impossible to innovate in Islamic banking and finance. Some people may say that, but does it mean that you have to innovate in light of uh, innovation in conventional uh, financial markets? The answer is yes, because Islamic banking and finance as it stands today, is, is and this is, is uh, 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 bolden, is part of conventional financial markets. Some people like it or not, but this is the reality. Everywhere where Islamic banking and finance uh, exists, this is actually uh, part of conventional banking and finance. Even in Malaysia, for example, which is a very mature Islamic banking and finance market. Uh, the size of Islamic financial services industry is very small in the countries like Malaysia, Bahrain, and uh, the UAE. Even in Saudi, where Islamic banking and finance is not progressing, uh, it is considered as uh, part of the conventional banking and finance. So whatever happens in conventional banking and finance, that has a bearing on Islamic banking and finance as well. Uh, on uh, a very philosophical level, uh, it, is, uh, it will be really good if uh, Islamic banking and finance uh, comes up with uh, a new idea, which is completely new, which is independent of conventional banking and finance. But for that, we need to have about 30 Nobel laureates. Innovation is a marginal phenomenon. It, it doesn't move in big leaps. I cannot create something which is completely different. What small brain is much. And for me or anyone else, asking them to come up with something which is entirely new, it is impossible. Starting you know, with the most genuine research is in academia. And when you look at academic research, it's very, very marginal. One innovative paper would actually contribute to just a bit to the existing stock of knowledge. The same is true in uh, industries as well. In financial services industry, we, we call it an innovative product when we have actually changed just one parameter in a formula. Right? Uh, so, uh, when we are trying to innovate in Islamic banking and finance, actually we must have good understanding of the cutting edge financial technology uh, in the general financial services industry. So this is the first ingredient. And this has been understanding of the experts of Islamic banking and finance right from the beginning. Although now the emphasis is changing. Uh, is shifting more towards the core of Islamic banking and finance. Almost 10 years back, uh, a bright student would come to me and ask, I would like to enter into Islamic banking and finance. And I would say, first work for a conventional bank. Try to learn conventional banking and finance. Only then you should go into Islamic banking and finance. The last three to five years, this trend changed. Because Islamic banking and finance was booming, and there was a lot of demand for personnel in Islamic banking and finance. Hence, my advice changed. So, if you want to work uh, in Islamic banking and finance, you can go to 
the likes of uh, UBS, Deutsche, uh, RBS, and so on, because they had very vibrant Islamic banking departments. The state of wealth, these Islamic banking and finance departments, they are part of big conventional banking and finance groups. Uh, so first thing, the deep understanding of conventional banking and finance is a must for innovation in Islamic banking and finance. Uh, second important thing is understanding of Islamic law. And this is something I have uh, learned only after entering the industry. As an economist, I would not uh, understand why a law would be required for uh, development of Islamic banking and finance. But uh, this is uh, one of the most important requirements to succeed in Islamic banking and finance that you should have deep understanding of Islamic law. And of course, when we say Islamic law, uh, conventional law, uh, whether this is civil, civil law or uh, common law, understanding of you know, the other secular laws is important as well. So Islamic law, which is in general for the sake of ease, okay, is called Sharia. So Sharia knowledge uh, is very, very important uh, as well. And the third thing is awareness of needs and trends in Islamic financial services industry. We may have a wonderful idea, uh, which is consistent with the Islamic law, but when you go out in the market, that product is not required. So you will fail, although you have come up with something wonderful, but that is not the requirement in the industry. So what are the needs and trends in the Islamic financial services industry? This is uh, extremely important to have a knowledge of it in order to successfully innovate in Islamic banking and finance.